Today, we're having a head-to-head -head matchup between chrome tan and veg tan leather, but we'll burn it, drown it, smash it, all in an attempt to see which is best. Well, for your project. Stay tuned. Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So, leather. We use it a lot on this show. As such, I thought it would be fun to take a bit of a deep dive into the different kinds of leather, specifically veg tan and chrome tan, to talk about the differences and how that'll affect your projects. This is the first in a new series I'm kind of starting on this channel that I'm calling The Matter of Craft, in which we break down the actual materials that we use to craft to get a better understanding of it so we could be better crafters. So, one moment. Well, gotta roll it up to be on camera. Now we'll specifically be covering chrome tan and veg, and veg tan, ah, oh, man. Dumb. And veg tan, because that's most likely what you're going to be using out there, but we will touch on some of the other processes that are used as well, just to be thorough. Now, before we get into what we would use these two different ones for, let's get into what they are exactly. First off, they are both leather, like they start off in the same place, right? But the processes used to preserve them and make them so that they're usable for you, the crafter, is very different. All right, let's start with veg tan or vegetable tanned leather. So after all the fur is removed from the leather hide or whatever, your veg tan leather is then soaked in a big old vat of tree bark tannins for months. I won't get too in the weeds on the science here, just suffice to say that the tannins actually bind to the collagen that's inside the leather. Acting like armor, they bind to the protein so tightly that the bacteria literally have no place to kind of get in there and take a bite. Anywho, this is an extremely old process that we as humans have been using for a long time, and it works great, especially because it leaves this leather, I like to call it alive when compared to the chrome tan, which we'll talk about. But basically it's reactive. You can do stuff to it to change its state a little bit. You can get it wet and make it malleable. It's sculptable, it takes a stain really well. It's just a fun kind of living leather, if you will, that you can use. Chrome tanned leather, on the other hand, is completely different. To preserve this, they use chromium salts, which fundamentally changes the leather, like on a chemical level. To preserve it, the chromium salts make like an ionic bond to the protein chains in the leather. They do so so tightly, there is nowhere for bacteria to even be able to get into, but it has a knock-on effect of actually freezing those protein structures in place where they're at. Meaning there's not a lot you can do with this, unlike with, with uh, veg tan leather, where you can dye it and shape it and do all these other things with it. Your chrome tan leather is what it is. This is the stuff you are working with. That's not bad, it's just really good to understand depending on what you want to do with it, right? If I wanted to make armor or a holster for a gun or something like that, something I can shape into what I need and then actually through other processes maybe harden it a little bit more, well that's where I wanted some veg tan leather. If on the other hand I'm making a bag, maybe a jacket, article of clothing, something that needs this kind of nice give that isn't gonna be affected by elements and other stuff I got going on, well, that's chrome tan all day long. Now, before we start manipulating the leather and showing you how the two different ones react, I really wanted to drive this point home by showing you really cool visuals that, like through a microscope and all that. But skill tree, <clears throat> skill tree don't got microscope budget, at least not like that, it's sad. So instead, here is some rope. Representing our chrome tan leather, I have this nylon rope here. Not unlike what's going on with the chrome tan, because this is nylon, it is a synthetic, right? It, it's, it's slippery against itself. It doesn't change when you do other stuff to it. Basically, it, it's a plastic. It is what it is. Representing our veg tan, I have this jute rope here, which is a natural fiber. If you get it wet, it will swell a bit. As you can see by the texture, it is quite rough. This will represent the little, little fibers inside of the, the veg tan leather. They can still move around because it has space to move around. It's not like stuck together. I'm taking both of them and I'm soaking them just kind of like what I would do if I'm trying to mold leather. Now, as you can see, when I crush up that jute rope, it basically stays crushed up because all the little fibers and stuff can grab onto each other and hold in that position. Meanwhile, the nylon rope just kind of slides right off. Doesn't matter how hard I squeeze it, it just falls apart. In fact, I didn't mean to, but I let them dry in a crumpled position. This, this is my jute rope. It is exact. it's a perfect demonstration. It's exactly the position it was crumpled in. Meanwhile, the nylon rope is just like this. That's basically what's going on inside of your leather. In the chrome tan, everything is kind of like sealed the way it's gonna be. There's nothing there to grab onto itself. It just all the little molecules can just kind of slide past each other. Meanwhile, your veg tan have all these little loose fibers inside and they have the ability to move and reposition themselves and grab onto each other, staying where you put them. But we're not just gonna take my word for it. Let's test it out. Let's play with the two and see how they react differently. 
science. But first, I wanna give a quick thank you to our sponsor, Fume. Now, I know it might seem hard for you to believe, but I have trouble focusing and I fidget quite a bit. The ADHD is strong with this one. And Fume honestly helps me a lot with that. So if you don't know what Fume is, it is a flavored air device, which does exactly what it says. It flavors the air. Basically, it uses these little flavor cores you can put inside so that when you draw the air into your mouth, it, it tastes really good, man. And if you're curious, I'm rocking a Cinnamon Hearts because it is winter time and it goes well with my whiskey, if I'm honest. But I know what you're thinking. How does that help with your fidgeting if you're just kind of puffing on a, on a thingy here? That's because the other thing this is really good at is basically a fidget toy. Listen, ready? Is that clicky? It is heavy, it is fun to spin around, it's got that little nice tactile feel. Not only that, but we have these little rubber toppers you can order with them that is fun to chew, which I love. It's perfect for someone like me who really loves to fidget a lot. Anyways, it's not just me, over 700,000 people now have enjoyed Fume. And right now you can actually get one of these toppers free when you order a journey pack and use my code SKILLTREE. I talk about it on this channel all the time. If you'd like to see what I'm talking about, just go to tryfume.com slash SKILLTREE or check out this QR code here. I really do love it. It is always in my pocket and I think you're gonna like it too. All right, let's mess up some leather. For our experiments here, I have these little sections of chrome tan and veg tan leather, both of which I stick inside of this water to soak. With the veg tan, the first thing you're gonna notice is a lot of bubbles. I tried to catch it on camera, but like when you first put it in, it effervesces. It's like, shh, really cool. But that's because there's plenty of little air pockets. There's enough room inside of there for water to take up that place, forcing all the oxygen out. You know it's reached saturation when the bubbles stop. It sounds like a scene from a horror movie, but yeah, that's basically when you know it's time to take them out. Our chrome tan, however, does not bubble at all. There is no room for other stuff inside of there. I know you can shape veg tan leather. I do it all the time on this channel. I've always been told you can't shape chrome tan leather, so I really wanted to give that the best chance of succeeding. And to help, I bust up this creepy thing. I made this a while back. You can check out the episode where I do it here. I, I have it here, hold on. Honestly, it is extremely useful if you are making masks or any kind of like prosthetic, but it also haunts my nightmares. It just, it just floats around and judges me, <laughs> terrifying. Anyways, as you can see here, I just kind of push and shape my leather into my awful mask form here until it takes the shape that I want. And where I'm making this for a mask, I would leave it on there to dry so I'd have the best chance of taking that shape. But just to kind of show off a little bit, I simply lift it off and it holds the shape pretty well. I put that aside to dry so I can try the same thing with a chrome tan. And this, no matter how hard I try, it just, it was not taking any detail. I can get kind of a rough shape in there but it was really hard to make it look right at all. I even decided to let it stay overnight to give it the very best chance of trying to hold that shape. But come the next day, it just kind of fell apart. It looked like it wanted to hold a little bit, but as soon as I pulled on it at all, it just went completely flat again. Meanwhile, the creepiness, it doth multiply. Well, look at that, look at the base of a mask right there. Fits, wait, fits right over my face piece, perfectly, fantastic. Though, that did give me another thought. This is milled veg tan leather. You see how drapey and loose it is? It, it feels a lot like chrome tan. But basically what they've done is they've put this in a big, big old drum and they've let it just kind of break down, right? It moves and moves and moves until all the fibers break down enough that it stays really kind of loose in fabric. But you can still dye it and shape it and all that, supposedly. I've actually never tried to wet form with it. So I did the same thing soaking it in water, and then I put it over the mask and shaped it. Though, because it is this loose, I didn't wanna take it off of the mask. I wanted it to dry on that little face mold because I don't think it would have held up like the regular veg tan. It's just too loose for that. But come the next day, totally worked. Not only did it work, I think I prefer it. Like if I was to be wearing this on my face, it still see how loose it is compared to this one. It's like stuck. But it took on the shape correctly, horrifying. But it's just, it's lighter and it's its more mobile. It doesn't feel like it's stuck on there. It feels like it would be kind of a more comfortable wear. I don't know, it was a cool experiment. I didn't expect me to like that a lot better than this one, but there you have it. But another thing I've always been told you can't do is, is stamp it, which I guess makes sense if you can't like press a shape into it or something. That's all stamping basically is, just far more percussive. But science is science and we must test this out. So I took this little small scrap o veg tan that I soaked with everything else and I stamped it. And just like we're used to, the stamp takes, it looks great. Meanwhile, the chrome tan, 
It, it didn't really take. There's a small mark there, but as soon as you put any kind of pressure on it or, or move it, it just disappears. I also decided to try this with the milled leather too, just to see. And actually, yeah, it held pretty good. It didn't wipe away like the chrome tan did. And again, like for different use cases, obviously, if I was making a gun holster or something that wanted to be firm, uh, I would use regular veg tan. For something a little bit more live, maybe a bag or whatever, this has the shape I want. It can take a die still. I kind of love the milled leather, not gonna lie. Now, another cool thing you can do with veg tan that you cannot do with chrome is harden it. I made a whole video here on hardening it in a bunch of different methods, but historically this was called, what is it, queer bleed, uh, like uh, boiled leather. But that's like a misnomer, right? You don't actually want to boil it. When you boil it, it just kind of shrivels up. It gets kind of destroyed. Not a good look. But then soaking it in warm water and either heating it or adding some sort of a wax to it, it actually gets to be really hard. I tested a bunch of these and some of them were stupid hard. But again, you can do that because there is enough space inside of this thing to accept those different substances, right? Like a wax or whatever. And once it's impregnated with that stuff, it becomes harder, right? There's a there's a naughty joke in there about hardness and impregnation. Anyways, that's just not something you can do with chrome tan. First, we know for a fact it won't take a shape. Um, and it's just, it won't accept anything inside of it. It's not porous enough. There is another way to tan leather. It's called brain tanning. It's often used with like buckskin or something. And interesting fact, there is just enough brain in most creatures to tan their own hide. Take that and do with it what you will, I guess. Basically by soaking the hide in, in its own brains, the lipids, the fats from the brains will bind to the protein. That's gonna help protect those proteins, but the real magic comes when you smoke it afterwards. The smoke, when it binds with the, the leather, actually forms an aneldehyde, like formaldehyde. It, it will preserve the leather. But because you have that lipid layer underneath it, it remains really, really supple with an outer layer of protection. Meaning you can actually wash that leather, like, like in the laundry wash it. The soap can't get into those fats to remove it. It is an extremely durable, really, really cool, kind of gross way to, to uh, preserve the leather. Though, if we really want to talk kind of gross, you know how they used to like dehair it? it? It was with urine, stale urine specifically. Because with stale urine, most of the water content is, has like evaporated away and all that you're left with is really strong ammonia, which will basically burn the hair off of the hide. Then the enzymes that are found in animal dung, animal poop, uh, helps to soften the leather. So then they would, they would put that on it uh, and let it sit. It was a real, what a job, let me tell you what. I imagine the old family was not happy that you came home after work after that one. Mm. So since the bonds in chrome tan make it so that nothing really penetrates to it, you can't dye it. Whatever color you get it in, it's a much purer color. It's nice from the factory, that color but that is the color. You aren't changing at all. Veg tan, however, because it is so porous and allows stuff to kind of bond to it, is great to dye. You can turn it whatever color you want. Not only that, but because it's still kind of like a, a live material, like I said, it reacts and changes over time, um, it patinas, it becomes nicer with age. Whereas in chrome tan, it'll stay basically like it is if you're taking care of it. It, it could crack or whatever. You gotta be careful not to let it like sit out in the sun for too long or, or dry out too much. But for the most part, it's gonna stay exactly the same, which is cool too. If you make a bag or something and it's that nice color you want, it's gonna stay that nice color. Whereas if you make a bag with your veg tan, it's gonna get this like really nice patina over time and wear and marbling and cool stuff, but it could also, you know, get stained or whatever, right? It's much more volatile that way. Okay, cool. So you know the differences, which means you know kind of what projects they would work best in. But how do you know at a glance which is which? You got like a pile of leathers or something, or you got a material you want to use and you're not sure. I mean, we've already seen with that milled leather that they can look pretty close. Well, again, so long as the veg tan that you're going for isn't already dyed, you know, it's going to be this natural color. It's kind of easier to tell. Also from regular veg tan, not that milled stuff, it's much easier to tell. It's much stiffer. Um, if you put a little bit of water on it, it'll soak in and kind of get darker. It'll be malleable. You can put your like nail against it and it'll, it'll draw into it. Whereas your chrome tan is more often than not already a color. It's clearly dyed that color. Not only that, but it behaves a lot more like fabric. You know, it's very, very loose. It's not nearly as rigid as your veg tan. Again, that milled leather is a bit of an outlier. You're, you're mostly gonna be seeing veg tan like this. There are some other ways to tell though. If you have a cheaper chrome tan leather, 
you'll actually be able to see a little bit of a blue line in the very center of it when you cut it. Those are actually the chromium salts. That's the very core of this where it has kind of the most concentration or where their dye job didn't reach to. Chrome tan leather actually, when it comes out of the tanning process is all like deep smurf blue. It's kind of like a sky blue actually, it's very pretty. But yeah, it's all just chemical blue. There is one other way to tell, which I don't recommend, but I'm gonna do it anyways, cause it's, it's interesting. And that is burning it. So since veg tan leather is made with basically natural ingredients, it's tannins, it is just the hide itself. When you burn it, it burns like a natural material, just kind of a nice yellow flame. It turns to char, just black char. Honestly, smells kind of good. You got wood tannins, you got animal product. It's like a barbecue, it's not bad. The chrome tan, however, when you burn it, it has kind of a subtle blue flame and the smell is not good, chemically not good. And before you in the comment section start telling me how horribly dangerous what I did was, because it is, it is very toxic, the smoke that comes off it. Do not burn chrome tan leather. But the black thing you saw on the top of that shot is this guy here, which is specifically made for taking like bad fumes out of the air. The filters in this one are specifically rated for like toxic fume removal. Not only that, but I was wearing my respirator. I also had an exhaust fan just over me and there's a bulkhead right over here with just wide open. So there was, there was a lot of air crossing through here. And even still, I made sure I left before I took this off and let the whole space air out for like an hour before I came back down here. That's probably overkill, but yeah, this stuff is really dangerous. You don't want to burn it. But another cool thing with burning it is actually if you take the ash from the veg tan, you can see it's just regular ash, it's black. But the ash from the chrome tan actually has kind of a greenish tinge to it. Again, that is the chromium salts. That's the chemical inside of it, which I thought was very cool. That's neat to know. Don't ever do it. Don't do it, but it's cool to know. Anyways, I hope that was enlightening and made you understand the materials we work with just a little bit better. I'm a strong believer that if you, if you thoroughly understand why things behave the way they behave, right, then you are going to be better at manipulating those things to do the, the alchemy of craft and make them whatever you want them to be. Now I know if I'm making a bag, let's say, and I want the, the front and the back of that to be nice and rigid and have pretty designs on it, but I want a gusset that's gonna move really freely. Well, maybe that's a combination between my veg tan and my chrome tan, right? That chrome tan will make a really nice gusset. The color's gonna pop, it's gonna look great. It's gonna be mobile for me. It's not gonna change very much with all that moving. Meanwhile, the front and back panels, I can stamp, I can dye, I can, it's gonna hold its shape, it's gonna be perfect. I can now manipulate those two different materials to make a finished project that's gonna be great. Now I need you to do me a favor. I'd love to cover more stuff like this. I find it wildly interesting and I'd like to do things like, I don't know what, different types of wood are there? Why is hardwood different from softwood and how does it respond differently when it meets tool, right? And how, how does that form? Different kind of fabrics when we use them are great for different applications. And when we sew them or work with them, they're gonna behave differently. Why? How do we work around that? I think that would be a cool series on here, but I want to design this channel to be something that you like to watch. So do leave down in the comment section if you liked this episode, if you found it useful, and if you'd like to see more like it. Now, if you did like this episode, please do leave me some of that like it love. It really does help. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the old bell so you know when I release new content. In the meantime though, keep leveling up, you. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. And it's a fantastic way to support this channel. Another fantastic way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members and we can't do any of this without them. They are the toxic chromium salts to my protein chain. The stale urine to my de-hairing process. Basically none of this works without them. A giant thanks to my Grand Master tier Patreon members, Froggy and Dragon Designs. If you like what we do here and want to support us, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can check out one of these videos that YouTube thinks you'd like, and that helps out a lot too. Okay, this one in particular is giving off Phantom of the Opera vibes, and I'd be dumb not to just go ahead and make that. It's already partially there, so I'm gonna go do that. Enjoy.